Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in the German city of Ulm. His father, Hermann, was an engineer and businessman. His mother, Pauline, was a pianist who valued order and precision. The family moved to Munich soon after his birth, where his father and uncle started an electrical company. Einstein was quiet and slow to speak, often lost in thought. People thought he was distracted, but he was focused on the unseen, the forces and patterns that governed everything. When he was five, his father showed him a pocket compass. The invisible power that guided the needle fascinated him. That moment marked the beginning of his lifelong curiosity about what lay beneath the surface of reality. He disliked school. The rigid discipline and memorization frustrated him. Teachers saw him as defiant, but he simply refused to accept answers without understanding them. His mother encouraged him to play the violin to find calm in structure and rhythm, something he later connected with the harmony of the universe. When the family business failed, they moved to Italy. Einstein stayed behind to finish school, but soon left, disillusioned by its structure. He joined his family in Milan, studied independently, and prepared for the entrance exam to the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich. He failed the first time, passing the science sections, but not the language and history parts. He tried again a year later and succeeded. In Zurich, he met Mileva Maric, a fellow physics student. They bonded over mathematics and philosophy, sharing a deep intellectual connection. After graduation in 1900, Einstein couldn't find a teaching job. He took a position as a patent clerk in Bern, examining technical inventions. It was dull work, but it gave him time to think. In 1905, while still at the patent office, Einstein published four revolutionary papers that changed science forever. One explained the photoelectric effect, proving that light could behave as both wave and particle, earning him the Nobel Prize later. Another explained the random motion of particles, confirming the existence of atoms. The third presented special relativity, showing that time and space were connected. The fourth gave birth to EQMC2, the equation that revealed mass and energy as the same thing. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. That discovery redefined physics from the life of stars to the future of atomic power. Einstein left the patent office for academia, teaching first in Zurich and later in Prague. But special relativity did not include gravity, and that troubled him. For 10 years, he struggled to unify motion, light, and gravity. In 1915, he completed the general theory of relativity. It described gravity not as a force, but as the curvature of space and time caused by mass. Four years later, a solar eclipse confirmed his prediction that starlight would bend around the sun. Newspapers worldwide hailed him as a genius. Fame followed and with it came pressure. His marriage to Mileva fell apart and he married his cousin, Elsa. His fame brought both admiration and resentment. Some German nationalists attacked his Jewish background and dismissed his theories. Einstein kept working and traveling, giving lectures around the world. He spoke for peace, reason, and cooperation. After World War I, he called for reconciliation among nations, using his fame as a platform against hatred and nationalism. In 1933, Adolf Hitler came to power. Einstein, on a lecture tour in the United States, refused to return to Germany. His books were burned, his property seized, and his citizenship revoked. He settled in Princeton, New Jersey, where he spent the rest of his life. At Princeton, he continued searching for a unified theory to link all forces of nature. Meanwhile, physics was moving toward quantum mechanics, a theory based on uncertainty and probability. Einstein respected it, but couldn't accept it fully. God does not play dice with the universe, he said. Niels Bohr replied, stop telling God what to do. Einstein believed nature was orderly, and that randomness was only an illusion of ignorance. He continued his search for hidden laws, even as younger scientists moved on. He remained a public figure, admired for both intellect and moral conviction. He spoke against racism and war, defended free speech, and supported civil rights. When offered the presidency of Israel, he declined, saying he lacked the experience to deal with people. Reports said that Einstein sometimes napped holding a metal spoon. As he drifted into sleep, it would fall, wake him, and let him capture ideas before they vanished. Whether true or not, it matched his constant pursuit of thought. 
Insights claimed he avoided grooming to save time, letting his hair grow wild on purpose. His disheveled look became an emblem of creative focus and freedom. In 1939, two physicists warned him that Germany might be developing a powerful new weapon. Even though Einstein believed in peace all his life, he signed a letter to President Roosevelt, asking the US to act before others did. That letter started the Manhattan Project. Einstein did not work on the bomb, but its creation haunted him. After Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he spoke publicly against nuclear weapons and campaigned for peace. He became an American citizen in 1940, but kept his Swiss nationality. His home in Princeton was modest, cluttered with papers, filled with books, and often visited by scientists and friends. He smoked his pipe constantly and loved sailing, even though he often got lost. He said sailing was his way to think in silence. Einstein's later years were spent chasing his unified field theory, which never materialized. Still, his earlier work reshaped human understanding. His equations predicted black holes, gravitational waves, and the expanding universe, all later confirmed. His influence spread beyond physics into philosophy and art. In April 1955, Einstein collapsed from an aortic aneurysm. Doctors offered surgery, but he refused. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially, he said. I have done my share. It is time to go. He died on April 18, 1955, at 76. The pathologist who performed his autopsy removed his brain without permission, preserving it for study. For decades, researchers examined it, searching for clues to his genius. Their findings were inconclusive, and the act itself became a symbol of humanity's obsession with understanding genius. Albert Einstein was cremated in Princeton, New Jersey, and his family scattered his ashes privately to prevent a memorial shrine. He wanted no monument, no grave, no worship. He wanted his work to speak for itself. Einstein's theories became the foundation of modern physics. Satellites, GPS systems, and particle accelerators rely on his principles. His equations guide astronomers studying the birth of galaxies and the bending of light around black holes. He made the invisible structure of the universe visible. Einstein changed how humanity thinks. He showed that time is not fixed, space can bend, and reality depends on motion and perspective. He proved that imagination can be a scientific tool. He once said, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. He believed that questions mattered more than answers. Every discovery opened a door to another mystery. Einstein didn't conquer nations or lead armies. He conquered the universe's laws. More than a century later, his work still defines our understanding of space, time, and energy. Every new discovery, from gravitational waves to quantum computing, traces back to the compass that fascinated a five-year-old boy. Albert Einstein's greatest achievement wasn't just his equations, it was his refusal to stop asking why. A legacy not built from power or wealth, but from thought itself. That was his revolution, a reminder that one curious mind can reshape reality. Countless fascinating figures are waiting in the shadows of the past. Like, share, and subscribe to explore their worlds. Amazing stories of power, knowledge, and destiny. Thanks for watching.